So here we are again. Every year when it comes on to smartphone cameras, it's a battle between the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra and the latest iPhones. This year is the iPhone 14 Pro Max versus the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra, but there could only be one king. It could only be one smartphone king, and you guys are gonna help me decide who it is in today's blind camera test. So in this video, I'll be comparing these two devices. One image would be placed on the left. It could be the iPhone, it could be the S22 Ultra. Another is gonna place it on the right. So I love doing these tests because I'm not gonna be super biased and lead you guys astray. It's whatever you see and think is visually more appealing. You vote down below in the comments, so don't cheat. I'm gonna run through the video, show you the pictures. I will show pictures only first, and then I'll talk about the video aspect because I'm not gonna lie, the iPhone kinda does really good um, videos, so it might be a dead giveaway. But before we dive into the blind test, let's briefly do some housekeeping and talk about the camera specifications. The S22 Ultra is a big boy. It's rocking 108 megapixel f1.8 for the main lens, a 10 megapixel f2.4 for the three times telephoto lens, and a 10 megapixel f4.9 10 times telephoto zoom lens. It does have a 12 megapixel wide angle and up front it has that 40 megapixel f2.2 selfie camera. Now on the other side, the brand new iPhone 14 Pro Max is rocking a brand new sensor, 48 megapixel f1.8 main camera, 12 megapixel f2.8 three times telephoto camera, 12 megapixel f2.2 ultra wide camera, and up front a 12 megapixel f1.9 selfie camera. So that's the quick spec rundown before we jump into the blind test. As I said before guys, pick your poison, choose wisely, and don't cheat. Let's go. And there you have it. It might have been easy to recognize what was going on. It might have been hard. So what are you guys choosing? Was it the left side for the better image or was it the right side for the better image? I'm gonna tell you guys in five seconds. So comment down below right now. Don't cheat, all right? So on the left side was the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra. And on the right side was the iPhone 14 Pro Max. Did you guys get it right? What made you think on the right side was the iPhone and what made you think on the left side was the S22 Ultra? So yeah, the images might have looked weird. I feel like the S22 Ultra tried to oversaturate things and on the other side, the iPhone sometimes had like this very neutral color which sometimes looked weird. And I personally feel like the dynamic range on the iPhone was very hit or miss and inconsistent, but whenever it worked, it worked well. Now, some small things I've realized with the 14 Pro Max is that because of the larger sensor, not only does it perform well at night, but just snapping regular pictures produces a more like natural shallow depth of field without using any goofy portrait mode feature. I also think that while in video mode with the transition between different cameras, it's a much smoother transition between the different focal lengths. Not that I really care about it, but just something that's new and I've noticed. A lot of people like to bash on the S22 Ultra saying it's choppy when switching between lenses, but to me, I could hardly tell a difference here compared to the iPhone. The S22 Ultra has that crazy 100 times zoom feature and it's honestly really impressive. A lot of people saying 
if I wanted a real, like get a real camera, why, why, why do you need zoom on a phone? Come on guys, some people like to have zoom if you want to capture far stuff like signs and things like that. It might come in handy with the S22 Ultra. I see a lot of people trying to capture pictures of planes and stuff like that. There's definitely use cases for 100 times zoom. Now, so one of the biggest selling features with the 14 Pro Max is that brand new sensor, 48 megapixel images. It produces really good images, right? Yes, it looks great, but it eats up storage. One of those files could get up to 90 megabytes. That's the highest I've seen so far. And while taking pictures in the 48 megapixel mode, if you want to just quickly snap something, it might get annoying because it actually delays the shutter. So the shutter takes longer to process the image because it's such a large file size. So I feel like in the if you just want to quickly capture a moment, I wouldn't be rocking that Pro Raw. You have to enable Pro Raw. And whenever you use the 48 megapixel, the images are not really processed because it's in RAW. So it's not really ready to share, right? You could share it right away to social media, but it does lose a little bit of contrast since it's a raw image and it's not like processed. So if you turn Pro Raw off, then it uses the regular 12 megapixel, but it's, they call it pixel binning or something like that. I'm, I'm not crazy with photography, but basically that means it kind of down samples the 12 megapixel, but it's still sharper because it's still using that larger sensor. So yeah, that's just something you guys should know. 48 megapixel is not something I'm gonna use on an everyday basis. Now on the Samsung side, it has an even more higher resolution with up to 108 megapixels that you could play with. It doesn't take up as much storage as far as I've seen, but it still produces really sharp images and you could zoom in and see all the detail. Samsung overall to me just have like way better or more camera features like director's view that lets you record and see like the live view of all the cameras. It's way better to have more features to me personally to play around with whenever than have less features that you wish you had. So on the video side of things, they both record 4K and 1080p up to 60 FPS. Samsung though is way ahead of their time. They have 8K video recording up to 24 FPS and it's really sharp and vibrant, something that the iPhone does not have. Now iPhone's standout feature this year is the new action mode, something that Samsung has been doing for years. Samsung calls it Steadicam. Now Steadicam on Samsung's devices, I thought it was cool until I saw action mode. Action mode shoots up to 2.8K resolution, not 4K. I don't know why. Apple is probably saving it for the iPhone 15 to next year. They're like, oh, now we have action mode, shoots in 4K and everybody like, ooh, you know what I'm saying? But basically what action mode is on the iPhone is that it basically gives your phone a gimbal-like footage feel whenever you're recording and running about and you know you're gonna shake your device a lot if you're running or trying to capture, you know, action. On the S22 Ultra, it basically does the same thing, but it's called Steadicam and it only could record in 1080p, which is a bummer. So they both look lower resolution, same thing with the iPhone, even though it's 2.8, 8k it's lower than the 4k that we're used to and it requires a lot of light all right guys so now we're on the front facing camera of the iphone 14 pro max and this is the audio it does have autofocus which is really cool this year even though it's kind of struggling right now but you can kind of see me separating from the background so yeah what do you guys think about this quality compared to the samsung galaxy s22 ultra because this is what the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra looks like. You're hearing the audio coming from it. And Samsung Galaxy's been had autofocus on the front facing camera from time. So you can see it's probably focusing on me right there. And how does the audio quality sound? So how does it stack up to the iPhone? Let me know down below in the comments. Daytime though, this is what you could expect from the iPhone 14 Pro front facing camera. And again, we now have autofocus. And you guys can see how close the focusing distance is actually insane. How does it handle the highlights? Pretty good. The sky is still intact. Pretty good job here from the iPhone. Samsung also does a pretty good job on the front facing camera. It still has that autofocus, pretty close, minimal focusing distance as well. It all depends. You have to pick or choose. Which one do you guys think works out best? The skies and also the microphone. Let me know down below in the comments, but this is what you can expect from the Samsung S22 Ultra.
But yeah, that's it. That was my camera review between the iPhone 14 Pro Max and the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra. To me, honestly, both produces really good images and video side definitely goes to the iPhone. But what do I know? Let me know down below in the comments what do you guys think produce the best images and what phone you think is the smartphone camera king. As always guys, love, peace and tweaks. Signing out.